psychologist, certified ABA therapist, HOD of psychology department at Daffodil CTC Hyderabad. We are getting a lot of questions from our parents. What is the causal factor of autism? This is a straight question which we get during their evaluations, during the assessments which we do for the kids. So what is the causal factors of autism? There is a lot of research going on and still it is being going on and there is no single definitive or precise cause that what made autism in the children. So what is autism? Autism spectrum disorder is a complex neurodevelopment condition with a lot of multifactorials. So what could be the multifactorials? That could be genetics, that could be environment or other possible factors. Until now, science has not revealed that what is the precise cause for autism. It is still a mystery in spite we have so much advancement in the science. But still, with the science and with the research happen until now, what we got is little factors which are categorized that they could be a reason for the autism which is being seen a worldwide very huge in these days in the kids. So when coming to these factors, what we can do is we have to broadly divide them. So what we are going to do is we are doing a series of videos of what the science and what the research says for autism. So as a parents who are very keen to understand autism as a whole, this complete series which gives a perfect answer in the science perspective. So when going to the causal factors for autism, we are divided into broad five categories of these factors. The first category is epigenetics. What is epigenetics? Epigenetics is nothing but a study of gene changes but that does not implicate in the changes of a DNA sequence. See, these epigenetics modifications might be causing an impact, a profound impact in ASD risk. And the next one is immune system dysfunction. See, research or the studies currently which are going says that a dysfunction in the immune system might be also a risk for the autism. And the next one is a brain development. See, during the studies and the research has strongly said that they have found some abnormalities in the pre and the postnatal periods which is linking to the autism. And the other major factor which we usually tend to say to the parents in the counseling is the environment factors. These factors could be many could be the environment toxins or could be the maternal stress or also it could be the medications during the pregnancy, could be the infections, lot more. And the next major thing is the genetics. So when coming to all these broad categories, today we are going to focus on one of the major category or the one of the major factor that is the genetics. Let's see how the role of genetics plays in the risk of autism. When coming to genetics, numerous studies have said there is a strong gene component which could be a reason for autism. When coming to this genetics, uh, there is a well-known research team called Autism Sequencing Consortium (ASC), see, which has done a lot of research on what genes could be the reasons for uh, this autism. When talking about genetic factors, all these genes, mutations and variations will at the end impact the neural synapses. Neural synapses is nothing but the connection between the neurons. That is the reason why this autism is also called as a neurodivergence that means that their brain functions in a different way than a typical child. So when coming to this genetics, there are few notable genes which were said by this ASC research team. In that the first gene is SHANK3, S-H-A-N-K-3. This gene is caused with a protein change called SHANK. So what does this gene does? 
This gene directly impacts the neural synapses and creates a different pathway than the original one. So what happens is individuals which have the changes or in this uh, gene, there will be changes in seen in different areas. For example, the core ASD symptoms would be seen in them. That is language deficiency and social communication and also repetitive behaviors would be observed for the children who ever have this mutation of this gene or there is a variation of this gene. And the next gene would be CHT3. Sorry, CHT8. What is the CHT8 gene? This gene, it belongs to a DNA binding protein. So this involves in regulating gene expression and chromatin remodeling during development. So what implications it gives is, it can lead to alterations in the brain development and which relates to the autism. So what you can see is children with this CHD8 mutation or variation, you will see issues in their intellectual, you will see issues in their sensory sensitivities and sleep disturbances and also important thing, problems with the gastrointestinal. This is another important gene which could be a risk factor or a genetic factor for autism. And the next gene is PTEN. This gene plays a crucial role in growth of the cell and their division. So what you will be seeing is with this PTEN mutation or variation, again the symptoms of development delay is a major thing which you will notice which is also seen in the autism spectrum disorder kids and also you will notify a changes in their language deficits and as well as the social communication. So when coming to the genetic factors, these three notable genes plays a crucial role. Any mutation or any variation in these three genes are seen in the children with autism spectrum disorder. So there is a genetic testing for the in order to find out but again there will be lot of variability in each children with autism or each individual with autism spectrum disorder. We can also do MRI PET scanning for the brain but still how much the variation is shown it is still a question mark. And the next important genetic factor I mean the gene is do sorry for that de novo mutation. What is this de novo mutation? See, the ASC has published a research for this de novo mutation in individuals with autism. De novo mutation are genetic mutations that occur in the individual for the first time and they are not inherited from the parents. So what happens is these mutations, they spontaneously arise in the germ cells. So there is a lot of variability in this gene and it is very difficult to say or pinpoint that it got inherited. It is completely a new gene formed during the embryo formation. So a lot of research has been said that because of these de novo mutations, it is a crucial role, this is playing a crucial role in the development of autism spectrum disorder. So how this de novo mutation helps out is you know, a lot of research has been saying that the, the variability in this gene is again causing the issues in the child's intellectual functioning, the child's language development and also the child's repetitive behaviors. So, is there a testing for that? Yes, definitely answer is yeah, there is a genetic testing for this, but still it involves a lot of sequencing on the individual DNAs to identify the changes and this can also be an important factor for identifying the autism spectrum disorder. I'll tell you in a simpler way, so what the basis of all these factors relate to. So what happens is, these all will impact the neural synapses of the brain. So I'll tell you in a very easy way. Say for example, the brain neurons is like A to B, B to C, C to D. That's how a brain function has to happen. 
So these factors push the neural synapses in such a way that the brain functioning will be in a different way. So for example, instead of A to B, it goes to A to E. And instead of going from A to C, it might go to C to D. So this neuron connection, the synapses, is completely in a different way. That is why the brain works differently for the kids with autism spectrum disorder. So all these factors are pushing the brain synopsis to work in a different way. So next in the series of videos, we will be seeing another crucial factor that is environment factors and also how this gene and environment interactions also might lead to the autism spectrum disorders. I know this is completely about a science but for the parents we want to see what could be the risk factors for this ASD because of lot of questions in their mind because what does the science say? The science say all these factors. So in the next series of videos we will be dealing with the environment factors. If you have any concerns, any doubts on this please contact to us and reach us at Daffodil CTC Hyderabad. Thank you.